All right, darlings, let's do this. Page 87, Chapter 7, Pirate Attack. Pirates used many weapons when they attacked another ship. Their best weapon was often not a gun, a knife, or a sword. It was surprise. Sometimes pirates tried to fool the crew of the ship they wanted to attack. They pretended their pirate ship was an ordinary trading ship. They hid their weapons. They flew the flag of the other ship's country. That's tricky. When their ship was next to the other ship, the pirates fired their cannons and raised their pirate flag. They threw grappling irons into the rigging of the other ship. They pulled on the ropes attached to the grappling irons and drew the ships together. The pirates jumped onto the deck of the other ship. They screamed and yelled. They fired pistols. They waved swords and daggers. <laughs> that is crazy. <clears throat> hey, do you want to trade? Ha ha ha, just joking. I'm stealing your stuff. Page 90. Annie says, oh, wow, the pirate Black Sam Bellamy captured 50 ships and all but two surrendered without a fight. Says pirates tried to be as scary as possible in an attack. They wanted their victims to surrender without a fight. Usually, that's exactly what happened. Most sailors were paid very poorly. They were not willing to give their lives to defend their ship's treasure. Pirate weapons. When they did fight, pirates used many different kinds of weapons. The cutlass was the favorite weapon of pirates during the Golden Age. A cutlass was a short sword with a wide, sharp blade. It had a hand guard to protect the pirate's fingers. A cutlass was better than a long sword for fighting in a ship's tight spaces. It was also less likely to get tangled in the ship's rigging. Pirates often fought with small knives called daggers. Like cutlasses, daggers were good for fighting in tight spaces. During the 1700s, many pirates carried pistols called flintlocks. Flintlock pistols could fire only one shot before reloading. So a pirate attacking a ship often carried a flintlock pistol in each hand. Annie says, yikes. After he fired its one shot, a pirate often used his flintlock pistol's handle as a club, so it only had one bullet in it. He would shoot it, and then he didn't have any more uh, bullets to put in it, so then he would just use it to hit people. Pirates also had long, long guns called muskets. A musket's aim was more accurate than a flintlock pistol's. With a musket, a pirate could hit a target from 300 feet away. Pirates sometimes began an attack by firing a musket at the other ship's helmsman. The helmsman was the man steering the ship. If he was hit, the ship was much easier to capture, obviously. Pirates used axes to cut through the rigging of the ship they were attacking. Without rigging, the sails would fall down and the ship would be dead in the water. So without the sails, the ship's not moving, basically. Pirates also used axes to smash down cabin doors and break open treasure chests. Smoke bombs were sometimes used in pirate attacks. Pirates made smoke bombs by filling a pot or a bottle with tar and rags. They would set the smoke bombs on fire. Then they would throw them onto the ship they were attacking. The thick black smoke added to the confusion and fear. Pirates might also fire cannons in an attack. Cannonballs were made of stone or iron. They could easily rip through sails or smash the wood of a ship. Page 95, cannons were also used by other ships against pirates. At the end of the Golden Age, the British Navy attacked pirates with ships called men of war. Next page, Annie says this is a model of the British man of war that attacked and defeated Black Bart. actually really pretty. Men of war were huge. They could carry many more cannons than a pirate ship could carry. They hunted down pirates in seas throughout the world. Ooh, love the next page. Page 98, pirate flags. This one is probably, you guys have seen that one probably a lot, but probably not the other one so much. A pirate flag was called a Jolly Roger. That's in our book too. The first pirate flags were bright red, 
I didn't know that. I thought they were all black and white. The name Jolly Roger may have come from the French words Joli Rouge, which means pretty red. Here are some famous Jolly Rogers. The flag of Calico Jack, a skull, a skeleton, bones, or swords on a flag stood for violence and death. The flag of Blackbeard. The hourglass in the skeleton's hand meant time was running out for Blackbeard's victims. That's fun. The flag of Black Bart. On his flag, Black Bart dances with death. The flag of Long Ben. The skull on Long Ben's flag wears a bandana like Long Ben might have worn himself. Those are fun. Chapter 8, page 101, Piracy After the Golden Age. The sea battles at the end of the Golden Age did not completely rid the world of pirates. Barbary Corsairs continued to attack ships near the Barbary coast. Asian ships still sailed the South China Sea. American privateers attacked British ships during the Revolutionary War. In the 1800s, though, several events nearly wiped out piracy completely. In 1816, the home port of the Barbary Corsairs was destroyed. In 1849, the British Navy destroyed a huge Asian pirate fleet. In 1856, many countries signed an agreement promising they would no longer hire privateers. By then, the navies of many countries had begun to use steamships. Steamships didn't depend on the wind to move quickly across the sea. Pirates in their small sailing vessels were no match for the big, heavily armed steamships. Page 103. Pirates lived on, though, in adventure stories and legends. Treasure Island is the most famous pirate adventure story of all time. It tells the tale of a boy who battles with pirates while searching for hidden treasure. Treasure Island was written in 1883 by Robert Louis Stevenson. Page 104, Peter Pan was written in 1904 by J.M. Barry as a play for children. Millions of people now know Peter Pan through books, plays, and movies. Jack says in Peter Pan, Peter battles the evil make-believe pirate Captain Hook. Even today, there are new books and movies about pirates almost every year. Pirates no longer capture chests full of pieces of eight and gold doubloons. They capture our imaginations instead. Oh, that was quick. That was only eight minutes. That's it. The end of the book just gives us some more information and websites we can use if we want to hear more about pirates. Right? Just checking. Yep. Perfect. Okay, that's it. Pirates, the end quiz coming up in a couple weeks after break so make sure you guys listen to all three parts of the story and uh have a good vacation next week okay love you guys bye